Hello everyone, welcome back to For Science and Kerbal Space Program 2 Early Access. We continue our examination of possibilities as far as landing safely on EVE. And I'm back to the drogue shoot option. Uh, according to the comment related to drogue shoots, we are to deploy them immediately without waiting for it to be safe and see what happens. So let's just go ahead and do that. It comes up uh, quite a few times, people ask about the grid fins. The reason we're not using grid fins is because they'll probably explode. Uh, they have a much lower heat tolerance, so if they're sticking out, they're going to explode. And also, they're eight times heavier than the air brakes, and I'm not really looking for them to try to control us. I don't think... I mean, they could be magical, but uh, the aerodynamics of EVE, being that EVE has a really thick atmosphere, um, will probably force the huge body of this to do its bidding, whether we have grid fins trying to actuate or not. But still, I don't think they would survive the heat, so that's why I'm not putting them on. There was a comment about the directionality of the air brakes. This is how you would want air brakes to be deploying um, with this side. You want the, the strut side not facing the heat stream. Uh, because that's pushing it this way, which is counteracting the force in the opposite direction, right? So there's the force of the air pushing that way, and so the piston is trying to hold the air brake steady this way. But, uh, as the comment noted, it works either way in Kerbal Space Program, because basically as long as your air brakes don't rip off, they'll be doing air braking things, right? I mean, the goal of putting it this way is so that it doesn't break off, but if there's no mechanism in Kerbal Space Program for them to break off at all, then as long as they're sticking out, they are going to slow you down. So, yeah. But yes, uh, in real life, or if you were trying to design something, you'd want the strut side to be opposite the airflow, to sort of push against the airflow and hold the air brake steady outward. And they would normally be uh, maximum velocity for an air brake that the strut could hold it against, or maximum dynamic pressure really that the strut could hold it against. Past that dynamic pressure, the air brake would break. Well, I'll try 58-ish. Uh, some people keep insisting that we should get into low EVE orbit first, but basically in the previous episode I showed that we could just aero break into a low EVE orbit already. Uh, we just need to sacrifice a heat shield in order to do it. So we'll just double up heat shields. I think that the mass of the propellant in order to capture into a low orbit would actually be more than the mass of the heat shield. So if we take a look at the maneuver, how much delta V do we need to get down there? We got it to 300 kilometers before. Well, first of all, <laughs> you can't even do the burn with this one stage very well. But okay, well, see, it, it, it's not doable. <laughs> I mean, uh, this is the most efficient thing that we could use a swerve. And let's just say that it's going to take about a thousand meters per second to get from here to low EVE orbit. And basically the entire stage. You can see that the stage is 80 tons. So in order to make that maneuver, we're probably going to use 70 tons versus having 22.4 tons of ablator. I'd take the ablator. The heat shield, the dry heat shield mass isn't that much more than that. So we're probably talking about 30 tons. So it's better to have the heat shields than the fuel. And this is the most efficient engine that we could possibly get for this. Okay, well, anyway, speaking of that most efficient engine, we're gonna let it go. Of course, we would not normally arrive in orbit with enough to bring it down anyway. We wouldn't start off with 1,000 meters per second available. Uh, we are arriving in orbit with just enough to capture us down to this level. We would So we would need to have this stage bring us uh, bring us from here down to low EVE orbit and then another stage uh, in order to do the transfer and capture and then we'll make the entire rocket bigger. The whole thing gets to be unwieldy and more likely to explode on the pad. Unless you're just spending your time cheating it into orbit around here, of course that makes it easier. So I've set the parachutes to deploy immediately in theory. Oh, I... Uh, okay, uh, I didn't turn in time. Okay, 
Let me deploy the parachutes. They went poof, and then they're there. Okay. Let's see if they can help us turn quickly. Quickly! I made a mistake. I time warped too much. Uh, it's too late. But they did deploy. And so, well, okay. Uh, okay, right. Okay, let me try it again. But only in their pre-deployed state. Okay, well, 57, fine. Okay, let's try these parachutes for real now. Fifty-seven kilometer periapsis right now. So previously, it w that was sort of explodey, tending to tilt us. Now the parachutes will definitely help us help us not tilt away from retrograde. So that would be good. Even if they're not fully deployed, they would basically act like the air brakes. Okay, we're in. I might as well deploy them now, then. So, they're out. And holding. I mean, we can't push the deploy altitude, uh, you know, very high, so... I mean, the best is 5,000. So they can only pre-deploy. And one question is just whether they're more beneficial than the air brakes, right? Mass per drag. Or drag per mass. Okay, here we go for real heating. It might be that they're just sort of covered up by everything though. I don't know if they're effective in their current location. Okay, below 60, below 59. That periapsis is actually turning lower. Got a sort of overheating indicator over here. But we're not tilting right now. A blade, blader is uh, melting away at about the same pace as usual. So we were expecting about two passes through the atmosphere. But yeah, I'd say it is doing better. I'd say it is doing better. It, has, it just hasn't tilted away, which is the critical thing. Of course, we do have an overheat indicator on the core tank. That's not great. But we're going up now. And this alone will probably get us pretty close to low EVE orbit, which means that on the next pass, you'll be coming straight down. Those drogue shoots sort of a strange thing, but there we are. They certainly are effective. I don't think I would ditch the air brakes. I might, might ditch the main shoots though, depending on how slow we end up going close to the ground. I, The problem is I have a mix-up between my memories of Venus and of Eve, so I don't know exactly how fast we would be going close to the ground just as we are, even without parachutes or stuff like that. With Venus, with its 92 atmospheres of pressure at, this, at what we would call sea level, uh, that is a lot stronger and basically you don't need much by way of parachutes there. Here, with five atmospheres, I don't know. Now somebody noted that maybe we might need to have our return vessel be the top of this because it, the contract won't accept it otherwise. So I might have to put an additional heat shield here and think about whether it is the best shape to be returning to Kerbin with. It might not be. Okay, we are going back out. I don't know if the parachute is going to hang around in space though. So there we have a pickle. We've used a little bit more than half of our ablator. Maybe I should just use them on the second pass. Oh yeah, they went away. But I think we can just repack them. Is that right? 
Let's see. Yeah, they, they're all sorts of cheaty. <laughs> um, but I have to go individually because I don't have them action grouped for repack. Now, having repacked them, will I be able to activate them in normal staging or not? Okay, well, let me just put another slot in there and see if we can stage them like that. Okay, going around. Okay, here we go. The heat shields probably don't have enough for the entirety of this pass, so adding those drug shoots had better be enough. Okay, deploying the parachutes. Okay, yeah, they did the poof and they're out. Okay, yeah. Heat shields are gonna be a problem again. Just a matter of how slow we can get to before the blader runs out. Okay, we are below 60 kilometers. The way it's going, we're probably coming straight down. More drums have been added to the music, I feel. Oh yes, more drums are happening. More drums are happening. Still want this soundtrack for KSP1. Uh oh, no, there was that e you know, overheating indicator before too, but we've got extras. Oh, it's a landing gear. Well, we're certainly staying stable. We're not yet down to carbon speeds yet. And the ablator is continuing to ablate. I don't know what that is below us. Is that evil liquids? Is that a cloud layer? Is that land? I don't know. Well, that looks like water. Maybe. I don't know. Tough to say. Okay, we're about to run out of later. But we've certainly made it to lower altitudes. And speeds. Those went in a hurry. Okay, now the main tank is taking heat. Okay, it's it's not good enough. It's better, but it's not good enough. But we held steady. How low will it allow us to hold steady is the question I have. The drogue shoots. So, let me just revert to launch again. And instead of going to 58 or 57, we're go going to go back to 50. And see if, instead of doing two passes, we can come straight down on one pass. And then, of course, we're going to go on to doubling heat shields, and we'll go with the inflatable ones first, and then the these ablative ones, two of them. But we will try to avoid that. Okay, 50 kilometers should be a one-pass deal. Judging from what happened last time. Okay, didn't quite get to retrograde. It kept, keeps sort of hanging up at certain angles. But uh, hopefully the little drogue shoots will orient us before something explodes. Okay, 62 kilometers. It's pitching a little bit. Things a bit more unstable than it was last time. We've only really started ablating. But things are now overheating. Not sure why. The heat shields are still there. 
Why is the center tank overheating? Not as much ablation is happening, really. But maybe there's a sweet spot between 50 and 57 kilometers that we should go for. That center tank is getting a little bit too hot right now. We're holding retrograde though. Previously we would go away from retrograde when we didn't have the drag shoots or drogue shoots. This would certainly bring us straight down. Ah, uh, but that's gone now. Okay, so not 50. Well, let's just... <laughs> see how this goes. Alright. Um, 53? Gosh. Okay, 53. We had to do prograde because they went a little bit too far, but we got to 53. Let's go down and try not to time warp too much. Okay, parachutes. Overheating indicators have started. Ablation is happening. Okay, what's that? That's the landing gear down there and up there. Okay, one landing gear gone. I'm not too worried about the landing gear. We're technically going up right now. We will be going down. Okay, we're going down again. We have eight tons of ablator left. We're still really fast. But we're definitely not going back up again. We're still sort of hanging out at 52 kilometers here. Trying to bleed off speed. No more overheating indicators. We have five landing gear out of six. Okay, 41 kilometers, 1300 meters per second. And I'm thinking we're not going to run out of a blader this time. Hopefully. <laughs> Maybe I'm sinking too soon, but it's looking good. And more drums. 300 meters per second, 23 kilometers sea level, 23 ground level. So is that water or is that land again? Or is that just a bunch of clouds? Oh. I think the drug shoots went away. That's interesting. They uh, finally broke off. So maybe their minimum speed is 247? When it said that their speed limit was 247, that's what they meant? Well, at these speeds, we definitely need some parachute to help us out. But I guess we're keeping the main chutes after all. Well, there seems to be some ground-ish stuff over there, but these were definitely clouds. Okay, I should probably get the parachutes out. Not those. Oh, there's a pause. Something went out. Oh, that was... Okay, and we let go of the heat shields as well, it looks like. But that might have been premature. Okay, the heat shields are gone as our parachutes fully inflate. This is a bit bumpier terrain than I was hoping for. Deploying my five landing gear. Well, that's a lot faster than I thought we would be. Um, it doesn't look like. Oh, things are exploding, or things are happening up there. 
Um, okay. I don't know, I'm lighting the engines because we're too fast. I don't know what it's gonna do now. Uh. Whoa. Okay, okay, don't go up. That's a slope too. There's water, there's slopes. And we're using a lot of fuel just to land here. Ah! Uh, oh! Oh! No! Oh! Oh! Hmm. Well, we got to the ground, I guess. But we might need more parachutes. And gosh, if only I could target a flat part of Eve. That would be helpful. Even with parachutes. I mean, really, we didn't have that bad a touch, it's because we leaned over and crushed a whole bunch of stuff. So we need to land somewhere flat. Even if we had more parachutes, it wouldn't be any good the way it is. Those are still overheated, whatever those are. Um, yep, stuff was overheating in the fairing. I just want to point that out. Okay, well, anyway, progress. We've made progress. So, with this being the case, I will say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.